All right, let's quickly move right now to our first uh, interview. Osato Gubadia is joining us now via Skype. Uh, he's an energy analyst at Stairs uh, Business, a former senior associate at uh, KPMG. Let's quick take a quick look at the news. Not a lot of people are happy right now in Nigeria concerning the increase in the uh, pump price of petrol. Hello, Osato, are you there? Yes, I'm right here, Nancy. Nice to be with you. Hello, Sato. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Nancy. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um, Osato, Osato, I can't hear you. Hello, can you hear me now? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, good. I can hear you now. Osato, good morning to you and uh, welcome again to the program. It seems that any time you're on this show is when <laughs> pump price goes up. And... It's not really a laughing matter because not many Nigerians are smiling and laughing right now. Can you quickly make a sense of all this? Because it seems with what I've heard at least in the last few hours and the pulse of Nigerians that I have felt in the last few hours, many Nigerians are not happy. Not just that fuel price have been increased to 151. Um, electricity tariffs also gone up September 1. I talked about it, I think, on Tuesday, the service-based tariff system i explained that on tuesday so for our viewers in case you didn't watch it go to youtube now and find the show but speak to me about is there any justifications why nigerians should not be happy at this time yes thank you nancy so like you said the ppmc increased the ex depot price of petrol to 151 naira so that's just the ex depot price the price that nigerians will be buying it at is even higher than that this is just the price that the uh, retail stations would get it at from the depot. Um, so, um, but I wasn't surprised by this increase. I mean, if you look at it, the crude oil price has increased over the last month. I mean, you know, it, this, it reached its highest point uh, last month in August of $43 per barrel. That's the highest point since March um, when, the, when the, the lockdown started, at least in Nigeria. Um, so, you know, I wasn't surprised. The, PP, the PPPRA has said that they would start to peg the petrol price um, based on the price of crude oil. So we've seen that increase in crude oil, um, and so we expected that the petrol price would at least stay the same um, or increase. Um, I, thought, I thought that it could have stayed the same. I didn't think it would increase so high. Um, just because of all the, you know, just the economic challenges in the country, you know, we just learned that we had a minus 6% GDP. So we, you know, we, 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 didn't, we didn't know the extent to which, um, you know, it, it would increase. But now I think we can see that, you know, it, it, it's increased a lot. Um, mm. But that's because of the good oil price increase. Also, so how does this pricing regime, how, how does this pricing system really work? You know, because I, I can guess that many Nigerians are even confused because uh, there was an internal memo from PP, PPMC. That's Pipeline and Product Marketing Company. So many acronyms. So uh, you get a memo from PPMC. You get a statement from PPPRA. How does this pricing system work? And who, which agency is really in charge of adjusting petrol price for the benefit of my viewers? Right. So, and, and if anyone is confused by this, I don't blame them. It's been very confusing. Um, what is supposed to happen? was the PPPRA said that they would announce the price of petrol every month. Um, that, was, that was what it was supposed to be. But we, I mean, since, and they said this in March. Since March, we've seen where the NNPC will come out and say it some one day, and now it's the, it's the PPPMC saying it's um, advising on the price. It should be the PPPRA advising on the price every month. But what we have seen is that when the price goes down, um, they come and they announce to us. But when the price of petrol has to go up, they are quiet. But I, I think it's important that they come and announce to Nigerians. It's not, it's not enough to just tell the, um, the retail stations what they should sell it at, but they should also tell Nigerians so that we can hold the petrol stations accountable if they are selling it for a higher price than they're supposed to. You actually did say in your opening uh, statement that, of course, the ex depot price is 151.56. That was the price we saw yesterday. So Nigerians are expected to pay more. How more or how much of more? will Nigerians pay? Because, and explain also what that ex-depot price means. 
So the ex depot price is basically the price that um, petrol is sold from the depots to the marketers to sell onto the retail session. So there's still there's still some steps along the value chain um, where the participants would need to make to cover their costs and make profit along the value chain. So the price that 151 naira would not be the price that you buy it at the store or the filling station. It will be higher. How much higher? That is what the PPPRA should have come to tell us. They should have come to tell us, oh, you know, the price that you get on petrol at the retail station should be 154, 155. Right? So there's no confusion about it. Um, but we haven't done that. Um, so we, we don't know, but we can expect it should be something about 140, 154, 155, um, based on based on the prices that we've seen in the past. Hello YouTubers, welcome to Moneyline with Nancy TV YouTube channel. This is where we provide you with instructive business directions, processes and guidance to help you assess the right resources to fund your businesses to withstand every form of internal and external shock. You will find here awesome informative videos on business, entrepreneurship and lifestyle just to help you make informed business and financial decisions. Punch the subscribe button and let us drive you through the world of business. Please follow all our social media platforms on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and follow us for latest updates on our website. Mm. Yes, I like that you said that because even MoMA, and that's the major oil marketers association of Nigeria, had said that Nigerians should hope to buy petrol within the price range of, I think, 148 to 155. I read that, I think, some days ago. Also. So, should Nigerians really fasten their seatbelt at this time that the economy is not doing well, there are threats of an economic recession, and it seems inflation is high up there at 12.8%, electricity tariffs up, though uh, for the poor people, uh, the service-based tariff system still says 4 naira per 50 kilowatts per hour for uh, poor households in a month. So how do you think that Nigerians can digest all of this at this time? It's like we are being beaten left, right, and center, and we are being asked not to cry. And a lot of things are making us agonize at this time, economically. And, and fact, you're right. And in fact, that's not all. Um, in, you know, VAT increased 7.5% earlier this year. You know, if you're in Lagos, your Uber, your Uber boat charges have been, would, would increase. Um, so this, this has been the year of really, um, you know, taxes and immoral subsidies. Um, you know, we've been pushing for the subsidies for a while. You know, th there's been pressure from international bodies. When we go to seek loans, they, they want to see that, uh, that, we, that we remove the subsidies, that we're trying to free up our markets to attract investment. Um, so, you know, it, it's tough. It's tough for Nigerians. This is a tough period. Um, and, and, and if you look at it, you know, other, other oil producing countries have removed subsidies in recent times, right? But what they've done in the, in the case of Iran, for example, Iran moved the subsidies last year. Um, what they did was they gave um, cash handouts to the poorest 60 million Iranians to cushion the effects of the subsidy. Nigeria, on, our, on, on the other hand, um, we took advantage of the fact that you know petrol prices generally were coming down, and so we reduced we reduced the we, redu we removed the subsidies then, um, but. The, the reality is that petrol prices will come back up again, and so we need to ensure that they are adequate palliatives to deal with the effects when the petrol price starts to start to rise. I mean, Angola, um, you know, the IMF went to Angola last year and told them that look, they had to, they were spending 2.5 trillion dollars a year on subsidies, and the IMF said, look, you have to remove your subsidies. And Angola told the IMF, no, we wouldn't do it. We're expecting a loan from the World Bank. When we get that, we'll we'll use that to um to give cash payments to our poor citizens, and then we can talk about increasing the petrol price. Um, Nigeria has not escaped with that. Um, we would still have to do something to cushion the effect of um, removal of the subsidy when as the petrol price starts to increase. Now, explain also if these are offshoots of subsidy removal. You know, because in fact, since when the NNPC GMD announced that no subsidy. In fact, he announced it here on the program when I interviewed him, I think in April or so, that there is no subsidy. And he assured me and Nigerians, in fact, Nancy, no subsidy forever. That was his statement. So at these offshoots, because after that statement, we started seeing PPRA coming up with adjustment of price. At the time, too, credits to the government that fuel pump price was reduced to, I think, 138 
at a time, then increased to, I think, 141 Naira to 143.50 band or 143.80 until now that we're seeing this. So are these offshoots of subsidy removal that has been canvassed and campaigned for, for so many years or for so long that we really need to take off the subsidy because who does it benefit? Right, exactly. You know, this, this is a direct offshoot of the removal of the subsidy. Um, before the petrol price was fixed at 145. So if the crude oil price, which is obviously the, the main component of the petrol price, if that increases to $100 per barrel, for the, if, and if, it's, if it goes down to $30 per barrel, we still paid 145 dollars per barrel. That was the standard. But now, and, and that's because when, it, when the crude oil price goes high, we subsidize the additional cost of petrol. Nigeria subsidizes the additional cost. But now the government has said, you know what? No more subsidizing. If the crude oil price goes high, you know, you have to pay the higher price. And, and so that's what we're seeing in 151. If there was still a, uh, a, a, a subsidy on that recovery system in place, um, the price would still be 145, even though the crude oil price has risen, um, you know, over the past few weeks. Is there a justification that Nigerians should be upset or Nigerians should worry and complain at this time since it's glaring that we cannot even sustain subsidies at this time? Uh, we are in a pandemic, billions of dollars being spent on subsidies in the last few years. So is there a justification that Nigerians should complain at this time because there is a subsidy removal? Or is it that perhaps government is not also communicating well, so as Nigerians, we just understand it literally that government don't increase price of petrol. Right. So, so to be fair, there, is, there are long-term benefits to removing the subsidy. Um, the, the subsidy program is not sustainable. To be honest, even this, even the the price adjustment um, uh, regime we have is not is not sustainable, because what happens? So now the price is one fifty one naira. Um, so what? Are, so what if next month the price increases to you know one sixty naira? What happens to the petrol that um, that market has bought in this month for one fifty one naira? They've made you know hundreds of millions naira in profit just like that. And if the reverse is the case, if the price goes down to one forty naira, what happens? They, they make losses. So it's not sustainable. We can't we can't keep doing this and that while leaving room for market for manipulation of the market um, with this um, with this price advisory. Um, so this is not sustainable. But in the long term, we, we do want to be in a situation where we actually to some extent deregulated the petrol market. Um, it, it's to our long term benefit. Investors look at this. Um, and look at uh, when, when they want to invest in your country or give loans to your country, they look at, you know, at the amount of government involvement in the markets and things like subsidies are not good for that. Things like regulation, over-regulation are not good for that. Um, IMF has been hammering that, look, they'll give us loans, but we need to remove, we need to, you know, remove our, um, our petrol subsidies. So in the long term, this is good for Nigeria. But short term, I mean, 100% it comes with some pain. Mm. Do you think the other industry is over-regulated? Okay. Do you think that that industry is regulated, on, uh, over-regulated? So, you know, to look at it from the, from the um, government's perspective, um, you know, we saw we, petrol is one of the most uh, fundamental, strategically important um, byproduct of crude oil. And, you know, as a crude oil producing nation, and like most crude oil producing nations, they want their citizens to enjoy some of the benefits um, of living in a crude oil producing nation. Um, in a lot of in a lot of crude oil producing nations, the refineries are not working, um, so that increases the cost of, of um, petrol because they have to import petrol. And so what, what they do is that you know we have subsidies in place to cushion the to cushion the to, to allow citizens to feel the effect of the of the um, to feel the benefits of uh, you know being an, an oil producing nation. You know so you know government. I, I think I think that. Um, I, I think I think generally, you know, they're trying to do they're trying to do the right thing with uh, with the removal of the subsidies. It's definitely the right direction, but you know, it's, it it comes with some pains, like I said. Mm. This new price regime that we're seeing, left, right, and center. Do you think it reflects a competitive and market-driven system? I mean, so so it's not it's not a competitive. Um, system right so the, the idea that you know i can't i can't wake up one morning and you know get a, a few of my friends get some investment and still want to import um petrol into the country um there's there's, there's rules in place um 
so, and, and there's, there's prices in place. Like, you know, the, the government controls how much margin that uh, marketers can get, that players in the industry can get. And like I said, this is this has an effect on um, investors looking to come into the country because your margins are being controlled by the government. Mm. Now, f f finally, we are just talking about petrol, petrol, petrol. A lot of Nigerians also use kerosene. They use diesel. You know, factories use diesel and all of that. Um, what, because that has been deregulated for quite a while. You know, we are not seeing subsidies on, on any of those. How, how, um, how perturbed should we be? Because many Nigerians use kerosene even in their stoves to cook, you know, diesel for buses or for trucks and all of that. Right. Yeah, and, and you're right. That's one of the arguments against um, subsidies, against petrol subsidies, which is why is petrol being subsidized, but diesel is not, but kerosene is not. Um, you know, and, and, who, and who does the subsidy actually benefit, right? Is it benefiting the, 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 more, uh, rich, the more affluent people, you know, that have three, four cars and, you know, they're feeling, uh, they're buying petrol for three, four cars? You know, so that's, 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 one of the, that's one of the questions about subsidy, which is why um, it's a good thing that we're moving in that direction, because we're not sure who it benefits, right? Does it, you know, you know there are reports that um, people, people buy this petrol for, relatively cheaper at, at the subsidized amount in Nigeria. And then go to Cameroon, where it's more expensive and sell it there, making profits. So are we subsidizing Cameroon? Is that, is that the idea? Um, so, you know, at least we don't have control over, we don't know exactly who's benefiting from the subsidy. Um, so that's why I think it's a good idea that we are, that we are taking steps to remove it. Um, but, but the palliatives are important uh, because, because uh, it's, it, there's, there's serious economic challenges in mm. the country now. What kind of palliatives, again, are we expecting? Because the palliatives we saw during COVID-19 is that of conditional cash transfer for those that are on the register. So is it now that even the government is reeling from uh, a financial challenge? So where would he get money to <laughs> for palliatives? You understand what I mean? I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. But the government has to, has to um, be creative and also be considerate of... Um, of, of what Nigerians are going through. So it sounds like, you know, that, that's not something you can ignore. Um, you know, with all these tariffs, all these tariff increases and people are losing their jobs, companies are, companies are cutting um, salaries. You know, this, this is not, if, if you're going to remove subsidies or increase tariffs at this time, you need to, you need to be looking at the other side of it to make sure that the people are not suffering too mm. much. The kind, it's a delicate balancing. Thank you very much, Osato. As always, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, I've been speaking with Osato Gubadia, an energy analyst at Stairs Business, a former senior associate at KPMG. Thank you for watching our video. Please hit the subscribe button below, turn on post notification to follow all our updates.